Hello everybody, welcome to the IMIT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my Azure Stack series. Um, and we are we are part two, so we have part one of the introduction to um, Azure Stack HCI core technologies. Uh, so this is a four part where we're gonna be kind of breaking down the different elements of uh, the core technology of Azure Stack HCI, as well as going through the demo portal and actually just going through the configuration and just completing different tasks again. I don't really have uh, set set specific demos. I'm going. I'm just working through the different configurations um, of of the Azure Stack HCI, trying to integrate it with my domain, trying to integrate it with the other Azure services. Um, so just having it. To be fair, I'm learning as I go along, really, because I've I've never done Azure Stack HCI, especially in this sandbox environment. So um, I'm just going through, just documenting. Sorry, my sort of, sort of my me, me sort of configuring and playing with it, playing with the technology, and just just sharing it with yourself. So without further ado, let's get started with this episode. So this is part two of the introduction to Azure Stack HCI core technologies, as we mentioned. This is uh, not, not too many slides today, um, but in today's episode, we are going to be talking about, uh, so this is part two, we're going to talk about what is Azure Stack HCI, and then we're going to do a bit of a demo. So what is Azure Stack HCI? So Azure Stack HCI provides sort of a hybrid converged infrastructure HCI failover cluster solution that hosts virtualized Windows and Linux workloads um, and their storage in a sort of hybrid uh, on-premises environment. Uh, just like it's, I can connects with hybrid services to, to add capabilities essentially. So we, we've gone through this a few times with, um, you know, we've talked about just like it's already a few times in, in the other episodes, but just to, just, just to kind of clarify exactly, it's a hyper-converged infrastructure essentially. Uh, and those capabilities that I just mentioned include sort of cloud-based monitoring, site recovery, and virtual machine backups, uh, and obviously a central view of your Azure Stack HCI deployments in the Azure portal. Let's talk about failover clustering because that's quite an important part of Azure Stack HCI. So failover clustering is a Windows Server and Azure Stack HCI feature that provides high availability of common workloads. Uh, and for, for, for Azure Stack HCI, the clusters um, you know, will only really include virtual machines. Uh, and you create a um, failover cluster by enabling storage space direct. Uh, we're going to be talking about that in a bit more detail shortly. And these are on multiple servers running Azure Stack HCI. If a server that is part of Azure Stack HCI sort of fails or becomes unavailable, another server in that same cluster takes over uh, that task of providing those services by the, the failed node. This process is called failover, and as it results in it results in sort of minimal or in, in some cases not even you know no disruption uh, for your clients that are accessing the virtual machines. Talk about some of the components now of Azure Stack HCI. So nodes. So nodes are uh, Azure Stack HCI computers that are uh, members of failover clustering and are enabled for storage spaces direct. These computers have the failover clustering feature installed and run on, on sort of highly available virtual machine workloads consisting of services, applications, and resources. A failover cluster can consist of up to 64 nodes with Azure Stack HCI supports up to 16 nodes. And Azure Stack HCI cluster can host up to 8,000 guest VMs uh, with up to 1,024 guest VMs per host. Then have uh, client components. So clients are computers that consume available services and applications running with, uh, within that highly available virtual machines. And, and there should be, you know, there should be multiple uh, network paths between clients and the cluster. Um, you can configure client applications to automatically attempt to reconnect if they're temporarily unavailable. Then have networks as another component. So networks enable communication, obviously, between nodes and computers uh, consuming clustering workloads. In addition, nodes frequently use the high throughput and low latency networks for accessing storage between the nodes. Another component is clustering, uh, the clustering virtual machine role. So a cluster virtual machine role is a highly available role that runs on, on the node. Uh, clients consume this service by connecting to the virtual machines. If a virtual machine becomes unavailable on one node, uh, the failover cluster fails it automatically to the other node. Uh, the failover mechanism then automatically redirects client requests uh, for services to that new node. Uh, we then have resources, that's another component. So resources are physical or logical elements such as sort of your storage pools, your virtual disks or your virtual machines, which the failover cluster manages. Resources are the most, these resources are the sort of the most basic and smallest configurable failover cluster component. 
a resource can run only a single node or on a single node at any time, at any given time. Uh, final resource or component or component I want to talk about is clustered storage. So clustered storage, in addition to its own local storage, where the Azure Stack ACI OS is installed, each cluster node has access to the node's local storage, making up for like the shared storage pool where VM configuration and, and data resides. The storage space direct technology, which we're going to again talk about later on, allows uh, for sharing disks and they're attached to the individual nodes. So a bit of a diagram again, which kind of explains the network, uh, how the network all connected to the nodes and how the nodes interact with each other. So we've got the sort of the virtual machines at the bottom and then you've got your sort of clustered storage pool, which connects is connected into by the local storage. And then you have your nodes there, node one and node two. Uh, and then you've got the dedicated networks and the clustering communication. So the cluster, obviously, these are fast networks between the, 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 the nodes and the storage traffic goes through there. Um, so that's what do that kind of where all the failover uh, traffic goes. And then you've actually got connectivity then. Uh, that, so the network connects the Azure Stack ACI and the clients, which you have at the top right as well. So that's just a bit of an architectural precipitation there. So now let's jump back into the demo tent and continue with our configuration of um, this Azure Stack HCI in the Azure portal. Welcome back, everybody. We are back in the demo tenant and the uh, deployment for the HCI box cluster has completed. Um, so if you look, we, we started this at um, it's 5.54 um, and the last one to finish was, one minute, start time was 34, sorry, 3.34 p.m. <laughs> And it finished in yes yeah, so about about two hours two two and a bit hours yeah, yeah about two and two and a bit bit of change so if you look what what we've done so this was deployment of the US Azure Stack HCI which we do, did through the template once we validated <clears throat> so it, it obviously it did some install the the OS updates um, it did the uh, value proxy configuration prepared the service and security policies. Join the service to the domain, so it deploys the domain controller within your within your deployment. Uh, deploy the GEA endpoints, create the cluster, configure the networking, configured storage. So there's a whole host of of items that it, it completes. Um, when again, it takes around two hours. So um, if we go to the overview now, um, we'll still see a lot of these um, prerequisites. We are going to do these prerequisites. So the first thing we see here is this cluster has one or more updates. So let's click on this to install the required updates. Um, updates are available. Okay. Um, let's just do the one time update for now. Uh, next. Okay. Oh, that's one gig. So that might take a while. Let's see. Let's see. So that's installing the update. If that's in deployments again, if we can monitor that in deployments. No. So while that's updating, um, <clears throat> I believe we're already updating. There we go. That's that's currently updating. No, I succeeded. Apparently, there's more. Uh, click on that again. Let's see if it does it again. So that update's currently running. Oh, it's, it's done it as well. Okay, that's good. That's in progress. Now, while that's in progress, I want to go back to the overview. I want to go to monitoring because I want to set up um, the Azure monitoring. So let's click on monitoring here. And if we go, we can see here that it's already set up and it's been monitoring the CPU usage, CPU usage. Um, they're monitoring the usage memory, the network in and out. Uh, so you've got all your monitoring here, so the monitoring's been set up as well, um, which is very, very good. Um, if we go back up here and click on capabilities, um, 
and here we've got the insights we see the insights is not configured so let's click on the insights and let's let's try and configure this so I'll click on get started so I'm gonna have to create a new data collection here <coughs> So yeah, that's a resource group, Western Europe, that's fine. Uh, da, 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 da. So let's just call it um, HCI Box Insights, for example. Um, uh, we want it to be the Yeah, we'll leave that at the, well, do we want to create a new endpoint here, actually? Um, no, we'll leave it at that. Um, and the rest of that is fine. Let's review and create that. And we'll set that up. Okay, so good, that's actually successfully installed. Let's see if we refresh that. Uh, let's go back up to overview again. Capabilities again. And that's configured this time. So hopefully when we look at this, uh, we go down to insights now. Might not be populated quite yet, but yeah, we should be able to Uh, click on the different workbooks. Um, we can explore the different logs from here, really. Let's look at key metrics. Yeah, so we've not really done much, but again, we can look at the different virtual machines and its metrics, CPU utilization, key metrics here, regions, resource health, etc. So that's the insight setup, which is really good. Um, just want to go back to uh the capabilities here um so we are going to start working through deploying these um just like to set up the virtual monitoring insights and i think what we'll do is in the next demo we'll go through um setting up the zero auto manage for windows server and um, we'll also start looking at um, managing virtual machines through the azure portal as well um so that was just a quick uh quick demo session there that i just wanted to set up the insights and show you what had been deployed. And so as I said, next next episode and on the next demo, uh, we'll start looking to the virtual machine management for the Azure portal. And we'll have a play around with the um, setting up some more of the capabilities as well. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you're getting a lot out of this series. I'm very much enjoying learning sort of around the Azure Stack HCI as well as doing some of these demos and setting and setting up that jump box has been a lot of fun. Uh, finally, I've got it right as well. <laughs> so uh, you drop me a comment with, you know, if, if you're going through the same sort of uh, process, you know, if you're doing it in your lab, let me know what you think and what issues you've had or how you're finding the, the interface and the, the, the doing the different preparation. Um, and yeah, any other comments around the, the uh, topic as well that you might think I've missed or you might want to hear about. Uh, yeah, and again, thank you again for everybody's support. Um, as I said, the channel is growing. It's growing at a nice pace, a pace that's manageable for me. Um, try to do, you know, three videos a week. Um, and again, I am still in, really enjoying it. So got a lot more content to come. And this we're not even halfway through this series yet. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Until next time, goodbye.